Wow, I actually just sat down to film and forgot that my hair looked like this. I was about to start a video. <laughs> Let's see what it looks like. Oh no. Well, that didn't go to plan. To be fair, it's only been in my hair for about an hour, but uh, I thought I would do something more than that. I'll be right back. You know what? I'm getting my head on this afternoon, so for now, I've literally just put it in a claw clip. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I can't believe it. it's Christmas in a few days. I feel more festive in November than I do now. Today, I'm going to be testing some more things from celebrity makeup brands that I have not tried before, but let's see what I think of them. Also, I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to everybody that supported both my Jingle Jam video in donating money and also James's Jingle Jam stream. You guys actually surpassed my donation goal which was £2,000 and it kept going above that and then I donated the AdSense money from that video and then with my video as a fundraiser and James's 24 hour stream both of us together raised £6,400 for Calm which is more than either of us ever thought that we would raise so thank you so much if you donated but because of that that means that I am going to be doing both of the giveaways that I mentioned in my little goals and I will be doing a live stream at some point but for the giveaway I'm doing one giveaway of beauty products worth £500 and one beauty giveaway of products worth a thousand pounds. So for the first giveaway I will include a little video of the products that will be involved in it on the screen so you guys can see what you get if you win that one. And these are all the things that are included in the second giveaway. So if you guys would like to enter either of those giveaways, obviously you have to be subscribed to me, that is a, a given because it is for my subscribers. And just leave me a comment down below, let me know that you'd like to enter the giveaways, simple as that, and I will pick somebody in my next YouTube video. The first brand in question is one that I've never tried. I was sent a PR package from Rode and I'm pretty sure this was the first round of stuff that they launched, which is the glazing milk, the peptide glazing fluid, the barrier restore cream, and the peptide lip treatment. So I'm guessing I use these in order, but I will read the instructions just in case. I'm gonna start with the peptide lip treatment. I've gotta say, I do like the packaging of this stuff. I think it does look very nice. Oh, okay. It doesn't smell of anything. I know that they do have updated like flavors and scents of these. Ooh. Ooh, it actually tastes a little bit kind of plasticky. You know what, it tastes a little bit like the Inky List lip balm that I tested, I don't know, last month. Wait, no, that was back in September, wasn't it? And it's definitely thicker than I thought it'd be. You know what? It does feel very nice and hydrating, but I put a little bit too much on. I think I did put a bit, bit too much on because it's a little bit like gloopy. I think I've just put on too thick of a layer, like you don't need that much because it is quite a thick lip balm, but I've got to say it does feel very hydrating. Just not the biggest fan of the taste. The glazing milk after AM or PM cleansing, which I've done, by the way, normally I put on my vitamin C and an SPF, but I currently have nothing on my skin, just a little bit of oil because I washed my face, I don't know, like half an hour ago. After AM and PM cleansing, apply a generous amount into hands and gently press onto fess, <laughs> face, neck and Decollete. Follow with peptide glazing fluid and barrier restore cream for optimal results. Sweet, those are the other things I've got. So, little routine. I think I've seen Hayley do this and she sort of just does a little. <laughs> well, it looks like this. And then. Oh, why does it smell like donuts? Hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wasn't the whole branding for this? Like, glazed donut and I don't know if it's just a coincidence but to me it kind of smells like the oil that you would cook like you know those seaside donuts in that like it just sort of smells oily and a tiny bit sweet <laughs> that's what this smells like to me I don't think it's supposed to but that's what it reminds me of maybe that's just a weird coincidence I don't know but oh that does feel nice so from what I understand this is supposed to just give your skin a little bit of instant sort of hydration a little bit of a glow I mean it says glazing milk I guess it's supposed to give you that glaze to your skin but it does feel feel really nice actually. And I think that definitely has given my skin a bit of an instant glow. Yeah, my skin is glowing. I like it. It feels nice. It doesn't feel thick. It feels a tiny little bit oily. It kind of feels like a lightweight moisturizer on my skin. Um, Obviously it was quite liquidy, but it feels like it's sort of sunk into my skin and like, I feel like my skin looks a little bit more plump and juicy. I'm not sure you would like this if you have ridiculously oily skin. I mean, my skin is oily, but I quite like hydrating products just as I'm getting a little bit older because I'm getting a little bit more wrinkly and I feel like hydration feels in the wrinkles, you know, and I kind of control my oils with setting spray and powders and powdering throughout the day and stuff, so I don't mind a bit of hydration, but yeah, it feels nice, but it is sort of like that slippery feeling. So next, we've got the peptide glazing fluid, which is a dewy hydration layer, which sounds right up my street. Again, I think the packaging is actually really cute. And it says, after cleansing, glaze face with one to two pumps. Avoid the eye area. Hang on, I put the other one under my eyes. Was I not supposed to? What's this gonna look like? Hang on. Do I twist? Is it a twist situation? Oh no, you pull, okay. <laughs> this is what it looks like. 
By the way, the reason I never tried this brand is because when they first launched, I'm pretty sure they didn't actually ship to the UK, so there was no way to actually get it. Oh, this feels very thin, I like. Whereas now they do ship to the UK, which is why I think I got sent over a PR package. Okay, this to me just feels like a very thin moisturizer. And it does say to avoid the under eye area. For some reason, my skin is tingling a little bit. I did check the ingredients and it seems to be fine for these two products, but my skin is tingling a little bit. And then sadly for the Barrier Restore Cream, which is the slightly thicker one, which I don't know, is this more of a, like a night cream? I'm not 100% sure. Sadly, this one has got an ingredient in it that I'm allergic to, so I can't actually test this, which sucks because I really wanted to try that because it sounds lovely. Am I a little glazed donut? I feel like my skin does look nice and it feels nice that moisturizer does sort of dry down a little bit tacky which I quite like actually I feel like this would be quite a nice base for my makeup my face feels hydrated but it doesn't feel heavy it doesn't feel like I've got thick layers of stuff on that moisturizer was very very thin it does feel really nice I can't say that it's any better than the current like moisturizers and stuff that I use it feels kind of similar to how my skin feels once I've done my moisturizers anyway I'm not mad at that and I would use it again Florence by Mills I had a very nice PR package actually sent over from Florence by Mills and I've not really tried too much of their stuff since they first launched but it seems like they've come a long way since then they have definitely expanded their product range so the first thing that I'm going to test is the mind over matter oil blotting stick apply after daytime moisturizer to blot oil and blur pores or as a touch up over makeup throughout the day I've got to say these oh hang on a minute that is I thought it was going to be this thick look how skinny that is it's so small doesn't seem to smell of anything I have to say with these kind of products where they say that you can oh I really like the mechanism which twists it up that's kind of fun that's how much product you get you don't get a whole lot if i'm honest like there's not much in there i mean it does say 10 grams is that kind of usual for a primer i'm not sure just comparing it to this random collection primer that i had next to me this is 20 mil this one is 10 grams so i'm guessing like you know this is just solid form so like 10 mil, 10 grams. Is that the same thing? So I know that I've just glazed my face, but like I said, I do have oily skin. So I'm intrigued to see if this will kind of blur out any pores. I'm just going to put this in my T-zone. Ooh. Huh. Wow, that actually did work better than I expected it to. Hang on, wait, look at this section of my head here. Can you see it's just taking like a line out of the hat? Well, now that I've done that side, I feel like I've got to put it all over my forehead. Yeah, with these kind of products where they say that you can then touch up on the go on top of your makeup, whenever I have tried to do that, not this one specifically, I'm just talking about these types of products in a stick where you can touch up on the go. Whenever I've tried to do that, it has turned my makeup into a hot mess. You'd be better off blotting and then using a powder, in my opinion. I do feel like that's worked pretty well. It's definitely mattified those areas. It's not completely matte it doesn't feel as matte as for example the tart primer that's in the pot that like really sort of fills in your pores it doesn't feel as matte as that it still feels a little bit sort of slippery but it's definitely mattified those areas for sure um and it's made things look a little bit smoother so not bad as this video is about celebrity brands i'm going to use this fenty foundation stick again which i have tested in another video if you guys are whoa do you see the way it just swiped out that spot that was pretty cool i have tested this if you guys uh want to have a little look back on my channel but i thought i would just use this today this is the shade four and while we're on the topic of this what is your favorite celebrity brand if you've tried any because if i'm honest i feel like some of them are really good some of them are average and some of them just really seem like they're a bit of a cash grab. I'm pretty, pretty sure like every single celebrity that ever launched a beauty line had that criticism at the start, but then they kind of go on to prove people wrong if they're actually good formulas. I think the ones that have done it really well are Fenty Beauty and Rare Beauty. Out of the ones that I've tried, those two are probably my favorite. Um, House Labs, when they first launched, their products were not that great, but their recent stuff, when they entirely rebranded, that is more like it. They have some great products now. I need to bronze up my neck though, don't I? This is actually a body makeup. I don't know if this is actually still available but I use this quite a lot. It's the S19 Studio Lab Super FX Body Makeup which says it instantly perfects and smooths. This is in three light medium. This is a lot more transfer proof than just putting regular foundation on your neck. It is water water and transfer resistant. Not waterproof but water resistant and I can definitely vouch for that. Like I love the Ciate bronzing drops and I've used those on my neck for a good few years now but they will like if you get rain on them or like splash them it will start like running down your neck. Whereas this one doesn't do that. Let's just say with a little bit of powder. Just 
doing a bit of bronzer with my Rare Beauty contour stick. I don't know why I do this thing, but when I'm nearly out of a product, I tend to stop using it because I'm like, oh, I don't want it to run out. But then I'm like, Soph, just use it up for God's sake. Wait, I forgot to conceal. What am I doing? I think because that foundation covered everything so nicely, I was like, well, clearly I don't need concealer today. So when it comes to blush, I've seen a lot of people recently on TikTok and Instagram talking about these blush sticks or using them in videos. So they're the Florence by Mills Cheeky Pop Blush Stick. And I think they sent me all of the shades or like a really good selection of the shades, which is very kind of them. And I don't need this many blushes, but thank you. I'm gonna put some in my giveaway. I'm sure that the prices of Florence by Mills stuff has gone up quite a lot since they first started. Like just having a little look on Google, the blush sticks are 18 pounds each, which for a brand that in my opinion, seems like it's more targeted towards younger sort of teens. I don't know, it seems like a very sort of Gen Z kind of brand. I don't know, what am I? Am I Gen Z or am I a millennial? I think I will go for this one, which is called Kind Kelly. I mean like 18 pounds for a blush stick, I guess is pretty industry standard for celebrity makeup. But I don't know, I thought that these would maybe be like 10 pounds, especially because they're quite small. And like for another four quid, you could get a rare beauty blush. Ooh, that does look like a really nice color actually. So let's see if I can just go straight in on the cheek with this. I'm gonna try both. So let's go straight in on my cheek. I feel like that blended out a little bit too much for my liking. So I'm gonna take some on a brush. I'd say it's a soft matte finish. Definitely seems to be a little bit easier to apply and get more pigment straight off the bat when you just take some on your brush. I do actually really like that color. Yeah, it's definitely more of a soft matte. I guess maybe it's a similar sort of texture to the primer. I do really like the color of that. I think it's cute. Uh, I would definitely use that again. Sometimes these sort of stick blushes are really oily and they kind of remove your makeup underneath. This one isn't super oily, which is quite nice to see because I was a little bit worried that it was gonna be like a blush balm, but thankfully it doesn't seem to be that kind of texture and it's kept my makeup intact. Uh, maybe I would go for a slightly darker color because in terms of the pigment, like I like to have my blush quite bright anyway. Here's the thing, you get nine grams of product in here. I like how it's quite small and slim so you can travel with it easily. However, for the price, 18 pounds, I think it's a little bit expensive um, for what this is in terms of like the packaging. We have then got, again, from Florence by Mills, the self-reflecting highlighters. And I've got three shades, self-worth, self-respect, and self-love. Oh, that's kind of cute. Again, these are diddy. Look, it's like a little miniature. They're so small. How much product do you get in these? Six grams? You know what guys, I was saying that about the blush sticks not having much product, but the Fenty foundation stick has also only got nine grams of product in there. How much do you get in nude sticks? Okay, I mean, yeah, fair. In my nude sticks products that I use all the time, you only get seven grams in here as well. So, so maybe this is just a lot of packaging. That's it. <laughs> Why does it seem so small? Ooh, it's very slippery. Oh no. This one seems like that oily, balmy texture that's gonna remove my makeup. Okay, that seems like a straight up balm. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, oh, it really just seems like a liquidy balmy highlighter. Doesn't seem to have much pigment, it's just like oily kinda. Which is fine, I know some, that some people like that kind of formula. It has definitely given more of a glow to this side of my face, but it's also removed some of the blush pigment. It's not taking off my foundation, however, I think if you were to swipe this onto your face, it probably would, and I don't know, it's just not my kind of formula. It's not my fave. I do not like that, I'm sorry. There may be people out there that love this kind of formula, and they like a kind of oily glow that doesn't give shimmer and sparkle but for me and my skin type, this is not for me. I'm sorry. I'm just using some of my Maybelline loose powder. Why do barely of these celebrity makeup brands have a powder blush? Does Rare Beauty make a powder blush? I'm not actually sure that they do. Have I missed that? Does Rare Beauty have a powder blush? I know they have powder highlighters. I'm just using this Kylie one, which isn't even my favorite. I'm just using it because that's another celebrity brand. This is the Rare Beauty Brow Harmony in Cool Brown, which I do really like this product. It's not new, but I really like it. But I can tell you now, one thing these brands love is an eyeshadow stick. We've got new eyeshadow sticks from Fenty. We've got eyeshadow sticks from Florence by Mills. And we've got eyeshadow sticks from Rare Beauty. The Rare Beauty ones are very neutral and seem very sort of plain. Ooh, that's a shimmery one though. That looks nice. The shade Adventure. I like the look of you. Ooh, that looks really nice, it's really creamy. But now, like, which ones do I go for? Rare Beauty, do I test the Fenty? Do I test the Florence by Mills? You know what, the Florence by Mills ones look the most interesting to me. Mostly because they have some fun colors. I think I'm gonna go for the blue one. This is the shade Taffy, so I'm gonna go for that one. And maybe let's try the lighter shade in my inner corner, which is called Sugar Coat. Maybe I could use a bit of the green as well. There's a couple of pink shades, which is a bit rogue. I don't know anybody that would use a pink eyeshadow stick because that is surely just gonna make you look like you've got pink eyes. 
eye, or in the UK, I think we call pink eye conjunctivitis. It actually sounds a lot more horrible. Um, so that's this blue one. It's not giving a whole lot of shimmer. They do feel very creamy, but they almost feel like they're not gonna set. Uh, they, um, kind of does a little bit, but it's still moving around. I'm scared. Right, so I've actually not set my eyelids yet because I learned from past experience and cream eyeshadows generally do not like to mix with powder. I'm just gonna go in with this and draw it along my lash line. And then, oh, hello. Hey, sweetie. Hello. <laughs> Upon initial application, it seems to be going on fine, but it's not the most pigmented. I've just done two layers. So let's do the same on the other side. Like they they seem very creamy, but I'm just a little bit concerned that it's gonna smudge. But let me just see if I can blend it out a little bit. I'm just using a little pencil sort of brush. You know what? Since James actually just came in then, I feel like it's actually kind of dried, which is a good thing because I thought that this wasn't really gonna dry and it was just gonna smudge everywhere. This side is a little bit more easily maneuverable. <laughs> let's go in with another layer. And then I am just gonna try and wing this out. Yeah, see like with me winging it out, I feel like it's not giving that much pigment i might need a few layers use a brush to drag that out you definitely need a couple layers i think like once it's dried and then you add another layer then you get pretty good pigment but straight off the bat not the most pigmented it's all right because it does take a few layers i probably wouldn't reach for this that often i'm gonna try and put a little bit of the green blending into this Ooh, the green on top of the blue is actually really pretty Hmm, a little bit of that product is sort of removed. It's just not giving me tons, you know? Let's do a little bit on my lower lash line. See, that looks quite nice. But I'm so like back and forward between these. I think the main test of time will be when I come back from my hair appointment, how this makeup is looking. Let's put some of the, on my hand it's really creamy. Why is it not coming out of my eyes? Some of this one on my inner corner. Not a big fan of this color. No, nope, don't like that one. I'm just gonna set my lid above that ever so slightly just so that it doesn't crease. I swear anything can be saved with the Makeup by Mario Master Crystal Reflector. Just put a bit of glitter over the top and it will immediately look like you meant to have a messy eye look. Can you see what I mean? It just gives extra. Those are the eyes. Uh, to be honest, I'm not crazy about those eyeshadow sticks. I find it quite hard to find eyeshadow sticks that I actually like. That being said, I am gonna test the Rare Beauty ones, I think, in another video, probably like a short. And then I've got the Rare Beauty gel eyeliners. So again, this will be interesting to see if these transfer. Ooh, they're very skinny. Hang on, they twist up and then they don't twist back down again. But I'm gonna take the black and put it in my tight line. I actually feel like it could be a little bit more black than that, I'm not gonna lie. I've definitely got gel liners that are more intense pigmented. That's definitely made my lashes look fuller though, but I'm gonna see if this will transfer onto my lower lashes or if this is gonna smudge throughout the day. And exactly the same with this mascara. This is the Florence by Mills Up and Notch Volumizing Mascara. I have not tried this one. I tried their original mascara, I think. They had an original mascara, right? And that just wasn't a bit of me, but I'm gonna try this one. Actually, before I do this, let me just do settings very quickly. Oh, where's my electric fan when I need it? Now we'll go in with the mascara. The brush looks like a regular old mascara brush. The formula is quite dry, which I like. Generally, okay, not if it's like too dry and shriveled up, but generally a dry mascara formula, you do get a little bit more volume and it doesn't drop your lashes as much as in like, it doesn't weigh your lashes down as much. Okay, it's definitely giving me more volume. From what I can remember, their first mascara was quite natural. Second coat. The bristles kind of help to comb through your lashes, but it's definitely giving giving me more volume at the root, but then when you comb through it, it kind of gets rid of some of the volume. It's giving more of a wispy lash effect instead of my lashes being thick all the way through, like the ends sort of taper off a little bit. I do quite like it though, actually. Yeah, I think it's doing a pretty good job and it's not going too clumpy, which is nice. I do quite like that. It's not blown my mind, but I do like it. I would use that again. Just gonna powder throughout my face again. So these are how the eyes turned out. I do feel like the glitter kind of saved it a little bit. I mean, they're very simple. Those eye crayons didn't impress me that much. I'm keen to see how they last. Then I've got one of these, which is the Florence by Mills Be A VIP Velvet Liquid Lipstick. This one is in the shade Killing It. I think it's just a matte liquid lipstick. Let me just wipe off that road stuff. Put this on. Oh, oh my God, the, what the hell? The applicator is so wibbly, wiggly, wibbly. Like, look how flexible that is, what the heck? It smells quite sweet, it's very lightweight. It's kind of hard to get definition because the brush just bends. It seems to come out lighter than it looks like it will in the tube. It's a little bit of a thinner formula, but it reminds me quite a lot of the NYX Soft Matte Lip Creams, that kind of vibe. It's such a weird texture, like very, very matte, but very, 
like slippery almost. It has that sort of like cloudy texture. Does that make any sense? The color of that is actually quite nice. I do quite like it. So I don't think it dries down. I was expecting it to be like a thick dry down matte lipstick, but it's not, it's really lightweight. It does actually feel very comfortable. I like that more than I thought I would. Let's see. Oh, whoa, hang on. What is this wizardry? It's not transferring. Does that mean it's drying down? Maybe it's because it's a light color, but it's literally not transferring. Like what? But it still feels, oh no, it feels like it's kind of drying now. That was the most bizarre thing. That felt very strange, but I'm gonna keep that on. I do want to just define my lips a little bit though, because they're looking a little bit undefined. Yeah, okay, now it feels like it's dried, but it still feels quite light and comfortable. That formula is actually quite impressive. Well, I now look like an oily mess. Hello everyone, it's 11 o'clock at night and I just wanted to wear this for as long as I could. I did not powder throughout the day. I was just blotting my face, um, mostly because I didn't have anywhere to be after I came home, so. So I'm looking very shiny, which was to be expected, but let me just give myself a quick blot with my fingers because the main focus in this is I wanted to see how the eyes lasted. Okay, so looking up close at everything, the eyeshadow pencils or crayons, whatever they were, they actually have stayed in place pretty much. I feel like maybe the blue has faded a little bit on the outer corners of my eyes, which I'm not too sure why. So I've not really been rubbing my eyes or anything. Um, my eyelids have creased. I guess I didn't set them with enough powder, but that's not nothing to do with the crayons. The eyeliner that was in my upper lash line, that hasn't really transferred onto my lower lash line. Maybe the tiny, tiny, tiniest, oh, the tiniest bit. There's like a little bit of gray sort of stamped in my waterline, but just a tiny bit, nothing drastic. It's some not smudged anywhere else. About the mascara, there's a tiny bit of transfer, I think. Especially, can you see under this eye? I don't know how well that picks up on camera, but there's a couple tiny little speckles where it's sort of fallen down onto my face. And same on this eye as well. I feel like there's a tiny little bit of flaking, which is then turned into a little bit of like a smudgy sort of shadow. I feel like there's also maybe a tiny bit, can you see that tiny little shadow just there? Right there. On my lid, there's a tiny, tiny bit of transfer, but nothing bad. I've had mascaras that have transferred a lot worse, but there is a little bit, maybe because I've let myself get this oily. It's like breaking the mascara down. Oh, and the lip products completely came off. I ate a sandwich and had a hot chocolate and then have just been chewing my lips as I do. It lasted a good few hours though, and it lasted throughout me eating a bag of hula hoops and drinking a drink while I was at the hairdressers and eating an orange, but it did not survive my dinner. The rest of my makeup still very much there. I think that's all the updates I wanted to give you. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, please give this a thumbs up. And if I don't see you before Christmas, then I hope you have a lovely Christmas. I will see you guys soon. I will be doing a yearly favorites video soon, but that might now actually be after Christmas because my illness delayed my schedule a little bit, but it's fine. If you like this, please give it a thumbs up subscribe if you want to see more of these kinds of videos because I do them quite often and I will see you in my next video. Bye!